Fantastic. Thank you, everyone. Um, I am the founder of Decentralized Autonomous Society, um, an interesting project called Swarm that's been very active in promoting different types of governance, particularly evolution and corporate governance. But what I'm going to start with is actually a longer history in the evolution of particularly corporate governance and some of the larger trends that we're seeing. And um, why in particular uh, we've chosen to partner up with Citizen Code, another really innovative organization to um, allow people to launch blockchain-based um, uh, organizations. So if we talk a little bit about the history of kind of um, things that are happening in the overall world, um, the freelancer economy and, and workforce is expanding rapidly. It's now, um, or it's projected to be 40 to 50 percent of the U.S. workforce uh, by 2020. And one of the things that this sort of implies is that we need more fluid and liquid sort of equity structures. If someone, you know, is contributing to the success of your project, um, that may not fit into um, them being an employee anymore. It's highly likely that, you know, you'll have a designer or whatever it is that's coming and providing some, some benefit, but, um, but not fitting into, you know, the, the traditional context. Um, another kind of broad trend is, you know, that, um, you know, hierarchies and kind of traditional org charts are optimized for predictability, and there's a lot of, um, you know, freelancers who are now assembling kind of ad hoc um, from a network. So uh, a lot of open source software projects show, show this sort of um, different type of way where, hey, no one is an employee of any organization. It's not, the, the project isn't run by anything in particular, and it's all a bunch of people who kind of come together um, somewhat spontaneously. Um, and then you have very interesting, like, trends around things. Some, some people know that, you know, Zappos implemented Holacracy um, recently. There's been a lot of press about that particular thing. But those have a pretty complicated and heavy weight um, kind of rule set to get started with, if anyone knows and has tried to read the Holacracy Constitution, as I have. Um, it's not that easy to get started with. Um, so, hey, what if there was only a kind of lightweight open source solution that we could all use and do it? Well, that's one of the things that we've kind of been um, building towards. And a little more historical background, um, you know, some, some of this stuff come from different literature. Some of you may know cybernetics. Um, the original sociocracy, um, spiral dynamics, um, kind of de Hoc's work on chaotic organizations, um, the Valve flat, flat work, the Morningstar hedge fund, um, and a lot of open source software has been very deliberately kind of flat, and you know uh, a lot of the like clearest um, you know example companies as well in Silicon Valley have chosen deliberately to have um, flat structures. And then in the news a lot recently is Holacracy. Um, so th th these are all really interesting kind of, at least showing that some of these things are possible, if not necessarily that they're, you know, uh, mainstream modalities. Now, hey, Swarm, um, we started last summer with a um, million dollar crowdfunding campaign that was in Bitcoin, which then um, became a little bit less in value, unfortunately, I'm, I'm sure. Um, some of you are aware of that. And, um, but we, we did it on the basis of crypto equity, uh, which is this kind of novel idea that you can have a organization that is totally structured top to bottom in a blockchain setting. So not only do you have you know, a sort of stock equivalent that is there um, in, in issued in a blockchain context, uh, which is interesting in and of itself, and many people have chosen to make companies just on, the pre um, on that premise that sort of decentralized issu issuance is a kind of big thing. Um, but you can use that same type of structure to build in the full interaction um, for your uh, project. So the voting, um, you know, the, the actual where the funds go, some of the decisions all can be coordinated. And this is fascinating among other things because it, it's totally, um, you know, in some ways extra legal. A lot of the smart contract type functionality is providing something that you would have traditionally gone to the legal system to do 
and now you can do totally contained in a, um, in a pure blockchain um, uh, situation, often without any consent of any you know, existing regulatory body. So many of the, the things that have gone out and done this so far have said, you know, we don't even care necessarily where, what jurisdiction we're in because everyone who's doing it is totally anonymous. Um, and we just want to build, sometimes it has you know, various applications associated with it. Um, so, uh, and we also have done a lot of work on the kind of legal models around this stuff because you know, we at least want to be in a fairly clear regulatory status which led to a conference that happened at Harvard in January that basically created this new sort of blockchain partnership model called the Distributed Collaborative Organization. So, um, here are some of like the, the ideas that kind of are behind you know, this, um, wh why people think that this has changed and, and, and important. And particularly, you know, I, th I would argue that this represents a trend um, in corporate governance that is very, very similar to the trend that happened in open source software where you know, it was originally motivated by people who are somewhat ideological, that they um, you know, want to have things open source for the sake of it being open source, they, they believe in that. And over time, these things are building out really interesting kind of business models around them. Um, so at the very least, they can exist side by side, you know, traditional business models and augment them. And, and obviously, if people are familiar with success stories like Heroku or GitHub or a lot of other um, kind of companies, a lot of the you know Red Hat is frequently cited. You know you have some very very successful now uh, businesses that are primarily or sometimes exclusively built on open source software. And um, oh oh oh, I have so little time. Well, let's just skip ahead to the very kind of end of what we've done to this point. Um, so what we did is we have this open source constitutional model. Um, that is fitted in with the blockchain. So what we've effectively have is a software that um, allows you to, let's just kind of go ahead in the constitutional. Um, basically, it's all run through the context of a GitHub repository, and that is the organizing principles of the organization. It can be binding under US law as well, and then that is actually augmented by the blockchain organization. Okay, that's all the time I have. Thank you.